So in this video we will talk about connections of different field devices. This is a differential pressure switch, air differential pressure switch and this device is from Honeywell and the model number is DPS 400. So let's open this to check the connections. Here we have set point dial. Using this dial we can set the differential pressure set point. Okay. So here is the knob. Now it is set to 40. So we can increase up to 400 Pascal. So when differential pressure between two ports will increase uh, then this set point then it will give us a, a dry contact signal. Here we have three uh, connection po points. This is uh, number one, two and three. Okay. Number three is common and number two is normally open. Number one is normally closed. So usually we con uh, connect on normally open points. Here are the ports. We have a positive port and negative port so we also get a kit along this one which include pipes and screws and nozzles so like this we can for example this is the pipe okay so this is the nozzle which we use to connect it to the duct so for example if I now blow then you will hear a contact here. So I am blowing through this pipe and it is giving contact. This is used across uh, filters and uh, fans. I mentioned about this in a uh, video. I will give the link in the description for that video so you can have a look at that video also. This is a differential pressure transmitter. This is used to uh, detect air differential pressure. This part number is DPT 5000 from Honeywell. Okay, so let's open this one. In shape, it is similar to differential pressure switch, but its function is different. Okay, you can uh, watch my video on input devices. It is an active device which needs a power supply for its functioning. It provides us a 0 to 10 volt signal or 4 to 20 milliampere signal, and its range is from 0 to 5 kilopascal, or uh, we can also select from 0 to 10 kilopascal regarding connections first of all we need a power supply okay this uh, number one is for power supply we can connect here 24 volt dc or ac and the common will be the number three point and we will get output signal on 0 or 0 to 10 volt signal or number two okay this fourth point is redundant we will not use this point and then here we have different jumpers to select the range for example, we can select low range or high range. In low range, it will detect from 0 to 5 kilopascal and in high range, it will detect from 0 to 10 kilopascal. And even we can uh, select the response time. Uh, we want it to response, uh, respond slow or fast. And then output signal, we can select from here using this uh, number fourth jumper uh, that we want uh, voltage signal or milliampere signal. So here we have two ports, positive port and negative port. So uh, using this uh, pipes are connected to these ports and then we install this inside the ducts or wherever our application is. So this is how we make connections for differential pressure transmitters. This is water differential pressure switch. We use it across chilled water pumps to know the flow. Okay. It has two ports. This is high pressure port and this is low pressure port. And uh, the part number is I will mention in the video. And then we can open this to make the connections. Here are the connection points. Okay, so uh, here it is mentioned here uh, the connections. How we will make the connections? Okay, this is common. Okay, this is NO point and this is NC point. Usually we use NO point, so we will bring two wires only. One will be on the common and one will be on the NO point. Now to make adjustment about the uh, set point, there is a screw given uh, in here. So using this screw we can make adjustment or calibrate uh, we can adjust the set point for differential pressure switch so this uh, adjustment is usually done at the site when it is installed on the pump and then we make this uh, adjustment by using this screw okay so this increases or decreases the sensitivity of this uh, differential pressure switch this is a water flow switch uh, the part number from honeywell is s6065a1003 the, uh, we install this uh, in chiller plants to detect the flow through the chiller when we detect the flow then after that we enable the chiller so here it is also a switch it provides us uh, dry contact let me open this one to show you the contacts 
here we have uh, contact points this is common and uh, number two is normally open and number three is normally closed so this uh, this flow switch here we have an arrow okay so it shall be uh, this is showing the flow direction of the water it is directly installed on the pipe so when we detect the flow this probe moves here and we uh, get this signal as you can hear so this is how we detect the flow this is a motorized uh, damper actuator from Honeywell this part number is N1024 SW2 SW2 means it has two end switches which are used to give the feedback uh, for open or closed status of this damper actuator this is a two position and uh, floating damper actuator for, for two position we can use only three wires okay number two three and four on number two we will uh, put common number three will be directly connected to the power supply and number four will be connected uh, will be from the controller when controller will give contact signal on number four then it will start opening in counterclockwise direction okay you mostly we use this two position connections and we need a 24 volt power supply for this damper actuator here also we have a, a knob here to select the direction for example if this dam we want it to be uh, working in direct acting or reverse acting we can select it from here uh, in this direction it is now in direct acting okay now we it will become reverse acting okay in this now in in this mode it is in off mode uh, so using this it is in off mode here also we have a clutch by closing this clutch we can now manually rotate this actuator so like this you can see if you don't have a power supply or this damper has some problem so you manually you can move this damper okay. here is the connections part this is number two three and four points which we discussed earlier so three cables we need three core cable we need for the control and then we have here switches okay s1 s2 s3 s5 and s6 there are two switches but one of them is enough for us so we need two core cable for this uh, switches so completely we need five cores for feedback and control of this damper actuator this is a modulating damper actuator previously we saw two position damper actuator its part number is n110 sw2 same i told you before it is for the switches it also have two end switches installed on this one for connections we have modulating connections here number one we it is uh, 24 volt is connected number two common is connected okay on number three our zero to ten volt signal from the ddc controller is connected and on number five we can take feedback uh, for this damper it will provide us from zero to hundred percent feedback that what is the position of this damper actuator then we also have end switches as i informed you earlier in the end uh, in two position control it also have to uh, damper actuator installed Similarly, we have a knob here to select what type of control signal we have. We have, if we have two to ten volt signal, we can select it like this. Okay, then zero to ten volt signal, ten to zero volt signal. Direction also we can select select like direct acting or reverse acting. Or if we want to keep it off, then we shall uh, select it to be in the off position. Okay, then here we have connections. These are connections for the switches and these are the connections for the 0 to 10 volt signal, control signal, feedback signal and uh, 24 volt power supply. 24 volt power supply is in number 1 and 2. Number 3 is uh, control signal from the DDC controller and number 5 is our feedback uh, to the controller.